how to set up your paint gun. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, sounds like a few of you have bought paint guns and you're maybe not entirely sure how to set them up, how to hook them up, how to use them, which is fine because, well, I, I know how to do that stuff, so I'll show you. So uh, for starters here, we're going to go over how to set up your paint gun for uh, any kind of paint that requires flow, like a polyurethane, a lacquer, enamel, anything like that. The acrylics that I use a lot of times are a little bit different, uh, and I'll go over those in my next video, probably. So we'll get that covered as well. But for today, we're going to do the paint set. Whatever. We're going to do the paint set required flow. Sorry about the heater, I'm just going to keep talking. Uh, and at the end of the video, I will show you how to hook up your gun to your compressor so you can actually use it because not everybody knows how to use air coupling units, so we'll go over that as well. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I've got these guns partially disassembled, so I'm just going to bring you in closer, bring the camera in, and you can see me kind of put them together and get them set up a little bit, and then we'll do the actual paint setup, uh, at which point I'll, I'll move you further away again, as redundant as that seems. So, without further ado, I'll bring you in closer and you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now you get to enjoy a stunning view of my table and my hands and lots of background noise. All the makings of a good video. Anyway, as I uh, mentioned in my video about nozzle sizes, you have some essential components that you need to take into consideration when you're using a paint gun. So you have your needle, Okay, and that seals in your nozzle and when that pulls out by way of the trigger you get paint flow so when you get your gun it'll probably be assembled already but since you're gonna have to take it apart to clean it now and then which is something I'll also cover in a different video uh, you need to know how to put it back together so typically you'll have something along these lines just uh, the open end of your gun, your nozzle goes in there and this is something that needs to be cleaned well so you will want to pull that out now and then just to show you on this other paint gun. They come in a variety of shapes, okay? So your nozzle threads in to the front and that is where your paint comes out. Now this particular gun, the FLG4 from DeVildis, came with several different nozzles. There's also a wrench that you use. Uh, you can use a normal wrench or most of these guns will come with a wrench that you can use. Uh, and the size is on here somewhere. Right, a wrench that you can use to tighten that on. Okay, so get that on there reasonably tight. That's where your paint comes out. Next, you can slide your needle in through the back, okay, and you should be able to see it seal in the nozzle there. You won't be able to on this video probably, and maybe you can, let's see, and so there's your nozzle, okay, you can't see it, but I've got the needle all the way in now. So those are the, the two most important components for you to actually get paint through your gun. Now every gun, well not every gun, but a lot of guns are designed in slightly different ways. So these ones, for example, have this packing nut here, which I'm pointing to with this finger, right? And you can tighten or loosen that to increase or decrease the tension on your needle so that it'll be easier or harder to pull the trigger. If you have that too loose, as soon as you start to pull the trigger, you're gonna start getting paint, which is not what you want. You want your first pull of the trigger to give you just air, like this. See, I'm not actually moving the needle there. That would just give me air. And then after that, you pull the needle back with the trigger and that gets you paint. So the first thing you wanna do is adjust that packing nut so that you have those two different levels of pull. Okay? Behind the needle, we need something to push it back once we're done pulling the trigger. So you have a spring. Oh my god, it's a miracle. The heater shut off. So, you have a spring there, and then behind that, the stop. Okay, which screws in. 
and the spring pushes against it. Oh, which screws in. That's the part that I'm having trouble with. There you go. So right now, with the stop pretty much all the way out, I've got air, and then I can pull all the way back to here for paint. Now, if you don't want that much paint, for example, when you're setting up for acrylics, you'll want very little. What you're going to want to do, probably, is screw the stop in further. What this does is limit the degree to which you can pull the trigger back. So if the stop's all the way in, you can pull back for air, but you can't pull back any further than that to get paint. Alright, so you'll want it in most of the way, and that way you don't have to be as careful when you're squeezing because you know that you can't pull it back all the way and get a big flood of paint on your, uh, on your piece that's not going to dry properly. Okay, so, needle and nozzle are in place, and the stuff that goes behind it. Let's continue. This is the fan cap. Okay? So if you were to spray paint just through your nozzle, well, you, you can't really spray without this on there, but if you could, it would come out in a circle, right? Yeah, I can't see that. In a circular pattern, as if you had your fan adjusted all the way down. I'll cover that adjustment after. What the fan cap does it is distributes air through the holes in the sides, if you can see those, if it'll focus on them, which it doesn't seem to want to do. Okay, holes in the sides there, right? The air comes through those, and forces the paint into a vertical pattern or a fan pattern. Okay, so you need to put that on. What I do is just for this particular gun, because these are separate pieces, I just rest it on top of the nozzle and then thread on the cap that goes around it. Okay, so when you're doing this, you'll have to think about how it works. The air comes out of the sides and pushes the paint together. So if I have this arranged horizontally, that means that I'm going to end up with a vertical fan of paint. Whereas if I put this vertically, my paint's going to spray out horizontally. All right. So now that that's in place, let's take a quick look at this other one just so I can show you a slightly different configuration. Actually, sorry, before I do that, on this particular gun, I showed you that this was the stop. It's at the back of the needle and regulates how much paint you can get. Up here, we have a, a control for the fan. So what this does is changes the flow of air so that you get more or less coming out of the sides of the fan cap. And it regulates how wide a spray pattern you get. All right, so for this particular gun, that's right here. But that's not always the case. On many of them, you'll have your fan pattern adjustment on the side of the gun like this, and you can see it's got a little, I guess, diagram, so you can see what you're doing. If you tilt it, or if you roll it forward, you get a larger fan pattern, and if you roll it back, you get a smaller one. So make sure you know how your gun is designed pretty easy to tell you just look at it all right on this one the fan cap is attached directly to the piece that holds it in place as is the case on many of them so you just screw this entire thing in place this collar is what holds it tighten it part way decide how you want your fan oriented and then tighten it the rest of the way Obviously, this one also needs a needle. Okay, with a spring. And we have a slightly different configuration for the backstop here. Basically, the only difference is this one has another piece that threads onto it, so you can set a specific distance before you even put this on, which really doesn't doesn't do much except that uh, if you've got a particular setting that you really like you can use this to kind of save it if you will thread that in and now that one's ready to go 
Okay? So you can go ahead and put your, your cup on the top. Or if you're using a siphon feed gun, all of this other stuff will be the same, but your cup will go on the bottom. I recommend that you go with a gravity fed gun for, for pretty much everything, but there are instances where, you, where you'll want a siphon fed gun for high volume work. So keep in mind that most of the mechanisms on them are the exact same. All right, so we'll do the same thing for this one. I'll thread my cup onto the top. Sometimes you will use an inline filter that goes in here before you put the cup on. I'm not using one in this case, but that's just to filter out chunks in your paint. I'm gonna be showing you how to set this up just with water, so I obviously don't need one of those. Another thing that you're gonna want is a regulator. Okay, a pressure regulator. Now, typically you want, a, well, it depends, it depends on what gun you're using. Sometimes it's like 10 PSI at the nozzle, but generally, unless you have a very expensive gun, you can't figure out what's actually at the nozzle, so you put a regulator right at the entrance to it, which is what I've done here. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, for that, I use about 26 pounds of pressure on average going into the gun. If you're putting the regulator right at your compressor, you need to be able to figure out how much of a drop in pressure you're going to get for every foot of hose, and that'll depend on the diameter of hose and uh, a little bit on the temperature and such. So it's really best to have a regulator right at the entrance to your gun if you can. I'll show you how these coupling units work uh, after, but, well, actually, I'll just kind of show you now. What you want to do when you get your gun is attach a coupler to the end of it, usually the male end that goes into the other side, okay? So you'll just be able to thread that on. It'll be, well, it's, it's pretty simple. You've got the female end of, of the threads on the coupling unit and then you'll have the male end most likely coming out of your paint gun. So just wrap some Teflon tape around the male end and thread on your coupler. Then on your regulator, you'll take the other end, put that on there. And then uh, that's on the, the exit from your regulator, sorry. And on the, uh, the air entrance to your regulator, you'll put another male one which in turn will go into your air hose. So to actually use these things, you pull back on the collar, on your coupler, put that piece on, and just let it go. And that locks it in place. Okay, just one second here. Sorry. So here I have my air hose, which also has female end of a coupler on it. And I do the same thing. I pull that collar back, put it on my regulator, and now my gun has air. Okay? Which I can change the pressure of on my regulator. So using the dial here, I set that to 26 pounds. And then for the most part, that's about where I start when I'm doing my setup and I uh, adjust the air based on what kind of paint I'm using. All right, so now I'm gonna move the camera away a little bit further and show you how to do the actual setup, show you how the various dials and stuff work, and uh, then at the end, I will show you how to hook it up to the compressor. All right, guys, so I've just got this thing full of water now, and I'm ready to start doing the final setup on it. Alright, so I've got this set to 26 pounds of pressure right now. And you can see that I'm getting a nice mist out of it. But what you want to do is take the surface of your painting, which for me is obviously not this wall, but this is what I'm going to do it on. And uh, for this part, I like to turn my fan cap vertical so I get a horizontal spray pattern. And just get about the distance that you would be for spraying, about 8 to 10 inches and shoot just a little bit of paint at it. 
Now, you're, like I said, you're going to actually do this with paint on a test piece. Okay? Don't, don't, don't try and set it up using your actual piece. Use a test. But uh, spray the surface and see how it goes on there. See how it atomizes. All right? You can just paint a small area and see what it looks like. What you want, generally, is a pattern about the width of your hand uh, when it's extended. Okay? I think there might be something wrong with my camera. Anyway, you want a pattern about the width of your hand. So you can, uh, sometimes you'll want it bigger, but generally about the width of your hand and you're going to overlap by half. All right, so for that, you need to look at your fan pattern adjustment, okay? If you screw that all the way in, you see the difference there? It's like shooting a paint can. It's just a straight circle that I'm getting, and that will cause your paint to run. You can't really see it, but the water is running down here. That'll cause it to be too concentrated. Now, if you screw it too far in the other direction, you can end up with a spot in the center of your fan that doesn't quite get covered. So, this is a pretty good gun, so I don't really have that problem. Oh, that was turned sideways, sorry. There we go. Pretty good gun, I don't really have that problem, but a lot of them will. And a lot of the ones that are designed to have wider patterns will also have that issue. So when you do your fan adjustment, test it at the distance that you'll be painting from and try and get that hand width uh, pattern. Next, your needle adjustment. All right. If you want a lot of paint, you're going to want this screwed all the way out and you're going to be able to, uh, to pull the trigger. Oh, I just screwed it too far out. You know, screw it all the way out and you'll be able to pull the trigger all the way and get quite a bit of paint. Okay? That's kind of what you just saw me doing before, but I'll demonstrate quickly again here. So if I pull this trigger all the way out, I'm going to get quite a bit of material, which is going to allow me to move faster. And uh, for things like clear coat, it'll allow me to lay it down heavier, which is nice. But that's not always what you want. So for example, when you're doing acrylics, which I've probably said more than once that I'm going to do in another video, you're going to screw this thing further in. And then even when you try and pull it as far as you can, further in, further in. Even when you try and pull it as far as you can, you don't really, you don't really get much paint. Okay, so that'll allow you to just mist it on lightly. It's also good for touch-up work sometimes, but it's kind of difficult to explain that and to get it right, so I'm not really going to get into that. Okay, the other thing you need to be concerned about is your air pressure. Now, I told you 26 pounds is about what I use for, for pretty much everything that I do. But if you turn your air pressure up too high, you're gonna, you're gonna have way too much air in the mix of your paint and it's not gonna atomize correctly. The same goes, well, not the same, the opposite goes for if you turn it down too low. So always adjust your air pressure. Right now, mine's reading at 100, okay? I'm not spraying at 100. That's the pressure in the line when I'm not running it. Always adjust your air pressure when you're actually running it. And when I'm doing that, I read it at 26. Now, if I turn that down, to say 10, you're gonna notice, hopefully, hopefully the camera catches it, that I'm not spraying that, that air-infused mist so much anymore. I'm just kind of shooting water, uh, or in your case, just kind of paint that'll, uh, that won't go on evenly. It'll go on in globs. Can you see that? It doesn't have enough air in it. It's not going to atomize properly. It's probably kind of tough for you to tell. Maybe I can exaggerate it a little more. Yeah. It's hard to explain. I'm sorry. But if you have your air pressure too low, just make sure you're testing it. It will run more or it'll go on kind of speckly which is not what you want. You want a nice even spray. Okay? So, yeah, that's, that's really about it. You have your three adjustments that you need to consider. Your air pressure, your fan, and your needle. And when you've got those all working properly in concert with each other, 
your test should look good. You should have about a, a hand width spray pattern and it should atomize nicely. Okay. Now, based on what kind of paint you're using, you might want to adjust it so that you can either move quicker or slower or get more flow, but those are all things that you'll need to determine based on the way that you spray. All right, now I'm going to show you how to hook it up to your compressor real quick. I know this is getting to be kind of a long video, and, uh, and that'll be it. Okay, so here's a compressor. It's not the one that I actually use for spraying, but it's more likely to be the kind that you're working with. All right, so let me show you what we're working with here. This is the outlet for the compressor. It has a regulator. You can see the gauge there. Uh, yours may not, but it probably does. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Put your regulator as close to the gun as possible. So you have a coupling unit there just to the left of the regulator. And then we've hooked up uh, the female end of the coupling unit to the output of the compressor and the male end of it to the hose, okay? So, zoom out and go over there and show you what I'm talking about. And there we go. Okay, so, your regulator, then you've got your coupler here so that you can hook up your hose. All right, as always, you just pull back, put it in there. On the other end of the hose, got another, another, wow, that's a weird way to pronounce that. Got another female end of this, which has just been threaded into the end of the hose. Always use Teflon tape when you're doing air seals like this. All right, and then I put that into the coupler that's attached to my gun. Sorry, the regulator that's attached to my gun. So I've got the male end of that one. Just plug it in the same way. Air passes through there into my paint gun. So that's really all you need to do to hook it up to your compressor is have a few of these coupling units. In fact, you can thread your hose directly to your compressor if you don't need to take it off. We use different length hoses here sometimes, so we like to make it so that we can change things around. But you can just thread your hose directly into there. And really you only, well, if you really wanted to, you could thread the hose directly to your uh, regulator and you could thread the regulator right onto your gun. Then you have to unscrew it every time you want to clean your gun, probably, but those are, that is an option if, uh, if you really don't want to buy a bunch of couplers and set them up. This, I find to be the best way. So, I hope that helps. All right, guys, so that, uh, that's how you set up your paint gun. Uh, like I said, uh, my next video will probably be about how to set it up for acrylic. I'll actually spray some acrylics through it and show you how that works so if you're interested either stay tuned or I guess subscribe so that you get the notification when it comes out. Um, I do these kinds of videos every week so if you're interested in this stuff take a look at my channel I've got lots of this stuff on there and don't forget to ask me your questions so that I know what you guys want to know. Thanks for watching I hope this was helpful. See you next time.